Ah, it's time to relax. And you know what that means. Sit back in your favorite easy chair. Lean back. Stretch out. Kick off your shoes. Put your feet up. Ah, that's better. Come and enjoy the ride. Welcome to Tasmania, Targa style. <laughs> This is my third, third, and it uh, looks like a great event. Just hoping those uh, rain clouds don't come, and uh, it should be a great drive in the country. We're from Queensland, sunny Queensland. It's going to be fine and sunny here. <laughs> Right, I'll drive this away. Drive one-handed. Yeah. The gentleman in car one, the flag car of Targa Tasmania. Don't start your engine, assemble your rolling team. Congratulations to the rolling team. Target Tasmania is on the road for the fourth successive year. A cavalcade of automotive history covering 2,000 kilometres on some of the world's most challenging roads. In this time, the event has established its moments and its heroes. Twice national sports sedan champion and touring car driver Greg Crick, along with navigator Greg Priest, took victory in 1992 and 1993. In 1994, touring car driver Andrew Mediki and Alan Taylor collected the spoils. Target Tasmania was also one of the last events for the late New Zealand Formula One driver, Denny Holm. Triple world champion Sir Jack Brabham has been here, and so too has Englishman Sterling Moss. I mean, absolutely the, the, the finest of its type I've ever done. I mean, the roads and the enthusiasm of the people and the, the whole concept of the thing is, is absolutely sensational. 
And then there's the not-so-famous enthusiast. Those with the passion to use their sports or classic car in the way their manufacturer intended them to be driven. It's an event that's one of the world's classic road competitions. The actual competition on the roads, I mean, it, it is very special to be able to compete on, I mean, a lot of the main highways around here that are closed for the purpose of competition. And uh, anybody who just enjoys driving in the countryside in a car um, and enjoys that sort of windy mountain road type driving, and here we are, we're able to do it in competition conditions, um, and it's just fabulous, I just love it. There's nowhere else in Australia that you could possibly have an event like this. And you've got the combination of these wonderful roads and five days of competition and such fantastic scenery travelling around a complete island. I mean, there's nothing like it in the world. So many factors come into play. Tyres, weather conditions and the opposition, which includes defending champions Andrew Miedeke and Alan Taylor, and touring car champion Jim Richards, teamed with navigator Barry Oliver. 239 entries, ready to battle for honours in 1995. Tiger Tasmania 1995 takes to the road and heads 50 kilometres north of Launceston to Georgetown. A boy racer's dream, a blast around the block. Spectators gather in their thousands, tyres squeal, hearts race. Things can go wrong, and they do. Some over-exuberance in their potent Nissan 200SX from Catherine Davidson Code and Navigator Rochelle Splat ends their Tiger hopes for 1995. No one was injured. The fastest cars begin the event from the rear. The prologue decides the starting order. It also settles the first psychological battle between the professional racing car drivers and among the exuberant competitors in the different categories. Bates and Taylor in their Toyota Celica confirmed their pre-event favouritism with a blistering time for the four kilometre prologue of two minutes and 40 seconds. 13 seconds faster than Medici and Richards who recorded the same time. You can't compete against the four wheel drive uh, of Neil Bates because it's a fairest built car. But uh, no, uh, you know, if it, if it rains, we won't be quite as quick as we'd like to be, but uh, you know, it's wet, everyone's got to drive around it, so we'll just see what happens. Uh, last year, the car was completely standard this year. It's a modified special, so, so it's got modifications this year, and it is quite a deal quicker, but as I've said a lot of times, this event all comes down to tyres because you're only allowed six tyres, so, so that's the most important choice in this event, and no one can predict the weather, so, so that plays a big part in it as well. It's going to be a very tough year this year, you know, Neil Bates especially going very fast and Jim Richards very quick too, so we'll see, but it's a long event. The end of the prologue sees Bates and Taylor confirm their position as overall favourites. Richards and Medici are tied for second place, setting up an exciting battle over the next five days. The remainder of the top ten provide fierce competition between the best that Europe has to offer, plus the surprise inclusion of Tasmanians Bruce Hogarth and Bruce Walter, powering their 1969 GT Falcon into tenth place outright.
Sydney's Sharon McKay and husband Peter have been writing about motoring for years. Sharon has a women's land speed record and she's also picked up a few tips on good living. Day one and 232 cars left Launceston, a 270 kilometre loop, seven target stages through the hinterland of the northwest coast. Described as mild compared to the rest of the event, but still exhilarating. The longest target stage of the day, 16 and a half kilometres on the Paluna Road. Even though it was just the beginning, the battle for the lead was on in earnest. Each target stage has a maximum time that must be beaten. Time penalties apply for every second over the maximum. It is a race, but it's over five days. You only have six tyres for the event. So therefore you've got to drive in, with tyres in mind all the time and you have to drive conservatively at times to look after the car and tyres to make sure you're there at the end of five days. Mediki lost 22 seconds to Bates on the third target stage along the banks of the Mersey River and also at Paluna. The latter stage also a problem for Roy Frith and Ron Coonan in a Mazda RX-7 SP. They surrendered 35 seconds. Rusty French was on the pace, just half a minute of penalty time throughout the day. Jim Richards and Neil Bates gave away no penalties. Andrew Mideke's Porsche 944 Turbo gave him costly electrical problems for most of the day. We haven't had such a good day. We've had a couple of minor problems with the car. Uh, they're fixable, but we have lost some time today. So it's flat out from here on. Former sports sedan racer Tony Jury was lucky to be able to continue in the event in his Di Tommaso Pantera. The closest threats to Bates and Taylor are Ray Lintot and Mark Stacey. Their Toyota Celica was driven to the World Rally Championship in 1991 by Spain's multiple champion, Carlos Sainz. The final stage was around the houses at Longford. A great spot to see the cars in action, close up. The undoubted crowd favourites were Owen Parkinson and Mark Parsons in their V8 hatchback Tirana. Earlier thrilling spectators on the country roads. They kept their best for a smoky finale.
end of day one, Neil Bates and Jim Richards have set the scene for an exciting battle for victory. The Alfetta GTV of the Beninka brothers was third, with Guy Beddington and Peter Svensson rounding out the top five. Medici's problems left the defending champion 44 seconds off the pace. Locals Paul Bailey and Terry Bennett have moved their Porsche 930 Turbo into 10th position. Day 2, the most popular day of Target Tasmania among many competitors. The day is long, competitive and scenic. 440 kilometres, Launceston to Hobart via the picturesque and soothing east coast. The morning from Launceston to Bishano is memorable over magnificent passes in the northeast. It's sections like these that keep bringing competitors back, and it's made Targa an internationally talked about and renowned event. Plus, spectators rise early to get the best vantage points. This is the most perfect spot you'd ever get. Neil Bates and Coral Taylor were on a mission. The first competitive stage, the sidling. Drove that stage as hard as we could and, and used the notes to the maximum and, and when we got to the other end we were, we were fastest by a considerable amount which was, was extremely good. That's what we planned to do. Jim Richards and navigator Barry Oliver in a late model $200,000 Porsche tried their all to keep the four-wheel drive Celica of leaders Bates and Taylor in sight. Well, we've been sort of going as fast as we can go up till now, so uh, we are losing a little bit of time, but uh, at least it's close uh, and it's going to keep Neil honest. He'll have to, you know, press on where he, where he knows he's going to lose time. But uh, we're, if you could say that we're going uh, uh, as fast as we can conservatively, but I'm not going to try any harder. We're going uh, at a good speed. Uh, we haven't dropped a lot of time, uh, so we're happy to be where we are at the moment. Mechanical problems continued for Mediki. He bypassed three consecutive target stages. Now a minute behind um, uh, Neil and Coral, and about 40 seconds behind, uh, 45 seconds behind Jim. And that's, uh, I, I wouldn't like to get out there first. Uh, once we get going, I think we can catch him. Spectacular scenery and fine weather made almost everyone look forward to the run down the east coast. Those who didn't make it could still smile. It was a fantastic day for a picnic. We parked our car just over there on the side. And it, it brings together so many people from so many different walks of life. There is such a combination of people involved in Tiger Tasmania from people with rally backgrounds or touring car backgrounds or just the people who are involved in historic cars or, or just people who enjoy cars and own cars and don't normally compete in motorsport. For Queensland's Ken Feeney, competing meant overcoming an even bigger challenge. He's a paraplegic. High speed is just a matter of keeping the car straight. It's not much of a disability. But just around tight corners, it's really hard, yeah. That's the accelerator there. Brake, it's towards the engine like that. Midway through the day, on the twisting St Mary's Pass, amateur video captured his exit. No injuries. The crash halted the stage, and the lead crew swapped notes in a friendly exchange. We're really comparing our times just to see where we're situated. Have you got a title for this them? This is called the camaraderie of rally. No, we don't, we we don't get 18, this in circuit racing. Do you all agree? Yeah, yeah we do actually. Yeah, yeah we do. Bates and Richard started the day's competition tied on zero time penalties. But the passes in the northeast, including Welborough, St Mary's and Elephant, started to sort out the field. 
Bates and the Toyota Celica showed their superiority early in the day, establishing an eight second lead over Richards. The two drivers opened up a gap of more than a minute over third placed Ray Lintot and Mark Stacey. They in turn defended a six second gap to Melbourne's Dominic and Joseph Beninka in a 1977 Alfetta GTV. Beninka's performance up to lunchtime moved them to fourth place overall. Only 25 seconds further back were Frith and Coonan. Bates and Taylor's lead was 23 seconds. Around the streets of Triabana, confusion quickly spread. Maybe the attraction of the local pub. In there they could tell a few target yards. At the end of day two, the leading five have consolidated their positions. Frith and Coonan are pacing themselves, maintaining contact with the leaders, ahead of French and Curtin. Next are the British crew of Chris Rossiter and Jeremy Barker, who finished third in 1992. Whatever was ahead, memories were made of another unforgettable Targa day two. This is wicked and wild! Is this wicked and wild? <laughs> Target Tasmania 1995, day three. Melbourne's Alf Gage has been in most motor touring events. He's a character of the national scene and doesn't mind giving his Saab Turbo a good thrashing. Navigator was daughter Sharon. Oh, well, that's one of the best parts. I think it's a great bonding experience for a father and daughter, I think, to uh, uh, take part in an event like this. It's, um, all I can say, she's a hero to uh, put up with by driving. quite good, I really enjoy it. The only um, part last year I didn't enjoy was when we rolled into the ditch and I had Dad on top of me for a few minutes. But um, he's lost a bit of weight this year, so I don't think that'll be a problem. But yeah, no, it's great fun, I like it. I don't think we'll be going into any ditches this year. I hope so, anyhow. I hope not. <laughs> Day three begins with a short squirt up Mount Nelson. There are five Tiger stages still to come. Short demanding roads, short touring sections, the most intense day of competition, Woodbridge and Oyster Cove, carrying a reputation as among the hardest stages of the event. The Toyota crew of Bates and Taylor had a 24 second lead going into today's competition and expected to be slightly further ahead at the end of the day. Third fastest on the stage were the Victorian sensations Dominic and Joseph Beninka. But by far, the biggest headline makers were the Japanese crew of Wakiyuro and Ruriko Kobayashi. 
Competing in their third Tiger Tasmania, the husband and wife finished the event in a way they and onlookers will never forget. From the following Toyota MR2 of Cameron Parsons, these pictures show the beginning of the drama that unfolded. The Nissan GTR ablaze as it finished the Signet Tiger stage. The fire started under the bonnet and quickly spread. The two occupants leapt to safety just moments before the car burst into a fireball. So when you came around the corner, the car was on fire because the engine bay got on fire. The engine? And you, yeah. Oh, no, no, okay. Yeah, and then you leapt out of the car and then the car came down here on fire mm. and now it's finished here and it's all burnt out. So, so, so. yeah. Right. Okay. Initially when it came down, it was, um, it was probably 30 feet high. Initially, so. But as I said, they, they obviously pulled up, they had a fire and got out of the car and then it, and it exploded and rolled down the road a bit further. The car was totally destroyed. Another dramatic exit for Sydney's Peter Pilkington. Also a Tiger regular, he had proved how to get the most out of one of the world's finest luxury cars, the Lexus, running as high as 10th during day two. But on the final Tiger stage of day three, Ridgeway Park, an error and a unique view of the activation and benefit of airbags. Right. Medium left closing. We buggered. You alright? Yes, I think I'm alright. The car. The safety features were tested and passed with flying colours. Driver and navigator uninjured. Their only concern to warn the following competitors. A shame to end the event like this after doing so well. No dramas for event leaders Neil Bates, Coral Taylor and Toyota. They continue to stretch the lead. Jim Richards and Barry Oliver were consistently five seconds slower on each stage. The Beninkas continue to keep up with the leaders. At the end of day three, Bates and Taylor hold a 44 second lead over Richards and Oliver. The Badinka brothers continue to shine in their 77 Alpha. Hobart's John Pooley and Pip Welch in their 95 Porsche Carrera 4 are tied with BMW duo of Rossiter and Barker. Day four, an early morning start on Hobart's Queen's Domain, where thousands line the twisting bitumen every year. There's the urge to push hard and win the crowd's praise. Tasmania's Paul Bailey was the victim of the event's most unlucky accident. You're right, don't just don't panic. Just don't panic. Just don't panic. Right? Yeah. Just wait. Just wait for a second. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just stay in for a second. You're right. Open the top, Paul. Yeah, through the top. Yep. Open the top. Right on. Stop the car! Right. You want to roll back in? Circuit racer Paul Bailey and navigator owner Terry Bennett had climbed their way up to 10th place before this. She's right. That was for just a few seconds. As Bailey and Bennett looked on, the Nissan GTR of Richard Simmons and David Spargo added the ultimate insult to injury.
Further into the stage on a tight left-hander, Andrew Margot and Mark Coffey hit a tree. They were shaken for their ordeal. Day four headed north through the central Midlands. It was a chance for composure. Ahead, three laps of Simmons Plains and Targa stages like Sathana, Guns Plains and Rihanna. Stages respected for their influential characteristics. They had the potential to change the battle for victory. Simmons Plains, the fastest Targa stage of the event. Cars pushed to more than 200 kilometres an hour. Neil Bates and Jim Richards didn't lose any time, while Lintot lost five seconds and Frith surrendered three. Ahead were the tough afternoon stages. Before Sathana, Chris Rossiter knew that this stage plus Guns Plains and the final test of the day, Rihanna, were among the most crucial in the five days. From now on, it really sorts the men from the boys. And I'm not sure if I'm a man or a boy today, but we'll find out at the end of the day. But it's really from now on. The stage was a huge confidence boost for Bates and Taylor. They passed Richards towards the end of the stage. The rally champs stretching their lead by 33 seconds on this one stage. That wasn't the case for Tasmanian Ewan Hills. He rolled his Porsche at Rihanna. It's um, coming past a, a vehicle keeping out of his way and I guess I took that um, corner just a fraction too fast, hit the gravel there and um, that's about the story. The fence post fortunately was a bit rotten, slowed us up nicely and the bank took most of the thump and here we are. Target Tasmania in 1995 became truly international with six major manufacturers. Toyota, Porsche, Mazda, BMW, Alfa Romeo and Nissan poised to finish in the top ten. The Japanese crew of Kenichiro and Teru Sakamoto in a Honda CRX were progressing toward their country's highest finishing position of 25th overall and in spectacular style. And then there was an international sportsman from a different form of road racing. Champion Australian cyclist Phil Anderson content to cruise the Tasmanian roads with wife Christine in their 1964 Austin Healy Sprite. But not a complete change from the Tour de France. Uh, well, it's got its similarities. You have to get up early every day. You've got to face a, uh, a day of terror. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, f physically it's not so demanding. But then again, we're entering the... Um, a heavy day, so maybe if you ask me tonight, I have a different, uh, a different opinion. But at this stage, it's, it's going pretty well. To most not in contention for outright victory, the categories are all important. Drivers competing against each other in similar machinery. The cars broken up according to age and performance. Rob McDermott and the Rolls Royce Silver Ghost had the vintage category all to themselves. The beautiful Jaguar SS100, a supercar of the late 1930s. It was among the first of Jaguar's sleek performance classics. Three in this event, this one belonging to Victorian Dom Dimitina, led the post-vintage category from day one. South Australian Tim Linus won a Golden Target Trophy a year earlier in a Laser TX3. This time, he chose a vastly different machine, a 1959 Porsche 356. He was the pace setter in the historic category against the likes of Tasmania's Philip Nichols and Paul Ellis in a 1958 Austin Healey Sprite. Classics from bygone eras give Targa its personality and its ideals, a cocktail of automotive history. At the fastest end, the new releases, an intriguing battle for third place overall, unfolded between RX-7 pilots Tasmania's Frith and Coonan and Queenslanders Beddington and Svensson. Frith had the upper hand. He was superior in the specially built motorsport SP model.
Day four, and Bates and Taylor have a superb day, stretching their lead to one minute and 25 seconds from Richards, Lintot and Beninka. The new name is Peter McKay, a Sydney motoring journalist driving a Nissan 300ZX, navigated by Rod Horsley. The final day of Tiger Tasmania 1995. From one end of the island to the other, 510 kilometres from Burnie to Hobart. The final nine of the event's 36 Tiger stages. It started with Helia Gorge and finished at Federal Hotel's West Point Casino. After perfect weather, just what drivers didn't want on the final day. Torrential rain. Rain, hail or shine, the many hundreds of volunteer officials still turned out with a smile. Already a difficult and long stretch, the Tiger stages were among the most demanding and able to highlight the difference between the driver and car combinations. Helia Gorge, the opening Tiger stage. Caution, paramount. After coming so far, making a mistake and being out of the event would have been an enormous disappointment. It's a matter of how hard you're prepared to go. The torrential rain would play a major role in deciding category victories, some far from decided. The most difficult day of the event as the cars wound their way down the west coast on the eerie Lyle Highway. René Marge and Martine Perrault had been pushing hard in their Mercedes-Benz but slid into rocks on the Rosebury stage. Frith had to call on all his reflexes to avoid another car. The wear and tear was beginning to show at the lunch break at Queenstown. Uh, we, we kept it pretty easy. The, the gorge was just incredibly slippery. They even added another minute onto our wet times. But uh, the Salika's just been fabulous. That holds on and I feel, feel safe in it. The final leg to the finish is long, beginning with the 99 bends out of Queenstown. Patience was needed for the roads to dry, which came for the final stages. The father and daughter of Ross and Ruth Williams from Victoria in an Elfin Clubman starred in the post-historic category. They continued to press on hard on Mount Arrowsmith. 53 kilometres, the longest Tiger stage. In the early classics, the 1967 Alfa Romeo GTA of Sam Chester and Bill Elder from New South Wales led the category throughout the event. Victorians Dominic and Joseph Beninka were the chargers in the popular late classics. On Hellier, a throttle jammed open, forcing them to complete the stage by turning the ignition on and off. Back at that half three quarter throttle, so just turn it on and off the key. I did the whole page like that. On the roadside, they quickly repaired the problem. The drama didn't cost them category victory, but overall they slipped from fourth to ninth. Tasmanians Chris McCausland and Robert Antel in a 1986 Mercedes 190E were the ones to beat in the modern classics. Another local team of Jason Dan and Andrew Sluice drove brilliantly on the final day to clinch the category victory. The contemporary class contained many of the overall front runners. Victory here went to Sydney's Ray Lintot and Victorian Mark Stacey in the Toyota Celica GT4. Neil Bates and Coral Taylor only had one target, and that was overall victory. Less than 100 kilometres from the finish, they knew only too well that the competition isn't won until crossing the finish line. 
Last year, when victory looked a certainty, a rock pierced the radiator as they approached Hobart and the final Targa stage. It ended their event. They were shattered. Within sight of victory, they become aware of a mechanical problem in the car's drivetrain. Holding a substantial lead, they cruise through New Norfolk and nurse the car to the finish at West Point Hotel Casino to a tumultuous reception from the crowd gathered. They won convincingly by 3 minutes and 46 seconds from Jim Richards and Barry Oliver. Four minutes further back were Ray Lintott and Mark Stacey, with Roy Frith and Ron Coonan fourth, winning the battle with Beddington and Svensson. Tasmanian Porsche dealer John Pooley proved the worth of his products with a strong sixth place. Rusty French and Terry Curtin maintained a top ten place throughout the event. Chris Rossiter and Jeremy Barker, two Englishmen who came so far, again showed their class. The Beninkers should have finished higher than ninth, and Peter McKay and Rod Horsley rounded out the top ten. The front runners separated by 16 and a half minutes. The gala finish recognised the efforts of all those who completed the 2,000 kilometre adventure. Ross and Ruth Williams and their Australian built clubmen had proved that glory doesn't just belong to the overall winners. They were applauded for winning on handicap. The champagne flowed. None more so than for Neil Bates and Coral Taylor. They had returned to change misfortune into victory and succeeded. They were not alone in success. 192 of the 235 starters arrived in Hobart, all achieving the honour of completing Target Tasmania 1995.